Hello, hard video order stuff, welcome back. Have you ever gone out and shot some really nice video? You get it home, you're really happy with it, except the audio has some kind of hiss or noise on it. I come from an audio background, so I feel well positioned to give you my point of view on this. So here are my seven simple tips to banish hiss and hum from your audio for good. Let's do it. Just to get this one out of the way nice and early, unfortunately for our wallets, cheap microphones and preamps sometimes mean that you have to deal with some degree of noise in your audio. And I feel like us as videographers, on the whole, we love gear. And to be brutally honest, something like a new fancy lens is far more appealing to us than a, an upgrade to our audio setup. I get that, I do. The thing is, people watching your videos are far more likely to notice bad audio versus a new fancy lens. My advice is if you feel like your setup isn't quite where you want it to be, spend just a little upgrading certain components and it really will go a long way to getting where you want to be with it. I will pop some recommendations below uh, so you can peruse at your leisure. The closer you can get to your microphone, the less noise you'll have to deal with. And I know that that's kind of obvious when you think about it, but you know, say you set up your microphone halfway across the room, your signal to noise ratio is gonna be far worse than if your mic was right next to your mouth. I know that's kind of obvious, but it, it's it's definitely worth mentioning and really uh, just a small adjustment, just slightly closer to your talent can make a huge difference. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we go. This is a far from ideal uh, scenario with the microphone. It's actually behind me. If you can see it, it's just here uh, behind me uh, and it's picking up basically all of the room noise. It's picking up the whir of my computer, my uh, mixing desk. Um, I think it's actually picking up the whir of the heating, which is just coming on now. Uh, it's just not good. Uh, I've obviously had to crank the gain on my preamp, and I'll probably have to do some sort of tweaking to the gain within the editing, uh, just to bring the volumes up even further. So, sounds pretty horrible, doesn't it? Let's swap things over, shall we? <laughs> And here we are, we have the microphone just two inches from my mouth and obviously I've had to do some small tweaks to my gain settings on my preamp just because it's to compensate for the extra signal it'll be receiving from the proximity. As you can hear, there's basically no background noise whatsoever. So this is ideal, but obviously having a big microphone like this right next to your mouth isn't great because it's in the shot. Another massive thing you can do is to try and eliminate that room noise just switch off any kind of aircon, fans, computers, appliances, move your microphone or your talent away from anything that's making noise and you'll be in way better shape. Everything is noisy. Let me show you. First off, my mixer. And then my computer. And then I've got various hard drives. and it all gets picked up on the microphones. If you've watched any of my videos before, you may have noticed in the past these gray panels that I've got uh, either side of me and one behind me. Um, they're not, as you may think, questionable pieces of modern art, but they're actually acoustic panels that absorb high frequencies. This room without these panels sounds pretty horrible. Take them away and you've, you've got a massive amount of reflections. You clap, you can hear it bouncing around the room. Uh, it's not good, so they make a big difference. However, you don't necessarily need to spend big on these kind of panels. Uh, just filling the room with stuff will make a big difference. Uh, things like anything with which absorbs sound. So if you bring, say, a couch in or some people hang uh, curtains, blankets on the wall, that kind of thing. It all adds up and it will make a massive difference. Once you've done the best that you possibly can when recording your audio, we're then going to bring it into editing. And this is where the trickery starts. And the first thing I do on uh, every project, almost everything I, I ever record, in fact, is I add uh, an instance of an EQ plugin. Uh, almost any EQ plugin will do and I'm gonna add a low cut filter. This is sometimes known as a high pass filter or sometimes abbreviated to HPF in case you ever see that and wonder what it is. Um, what it does is it cuts out the super low frequencies that are largely useless and in some cases even just inaudible for the human ear. It's also the same frequency range you'll get from say the low rumble from uh, an aircon unit or something like that. So applying a low cut filter, it really, it's kind of one of these no brainer moves. Uh, and if you're not doing it, start. 
that's my advice. <laughs> the next thing I do is I use the same instance of EQ to find problem frequencies, and then I notch them out. A subtlety is the key, but if you massage your audio in this way, these small tweaks really will add up to be a big difference at the end. This is a technique that the top echelon recording engineers use, so my advice is practice it and you will be rewarded. In my experience, problem frequencies, I, I normally find problems around 250 hertz, one kilohertz, and sometimes four kilohertz. So try it out for yourself. Next, I use the same technique, but in reverse. So instead of finding problem frequencies, frequencies that sound horrible and bringing them down, I find the desirable ones and I bring them up subtly. There really is no right or wrong, it just depends what sounds good to you guys, but I find a good starting point for nice sounding frequencies for voice anyway are 100 hertz, 8 kilohertz and 12 kilohertz. Try them out. Lastly, it is possible to follow all of these steps and still need more help in perfecting your audio. And in this case, that's when I turn to some slightly more surgical plugins. In particular, we're talking about noise reduction plugins, leveling plugins, and really specialized ones for pops, clicks, hums, that kind of thing. Let me show you a few of the best. First up is a traditional noise reduction plugin, and the great thing about this one is that you can make the plugin listen to your track and it will actually learn where the noisy frequencies are. You can then go in and dial in the exact amount of noise reduction you'd like. It's incredibly easy and pretty affordable and I use it frequently. Next, we're stepping up a notch with a plugin I found recently called D-Reverb by Isotope and it's pretty amazing. Again, you can set the plugin to learn the problem frequencies in your track, and as the plugin suggests, it will actually decrease the amount of reverb or room noise in your track. Let me show you an example now. Okay, so here we go. This is a far from ideal uh, scenario with the microphone. It's actually behind me, if you can see it, it's just here. Okay, so here we go. This is a far from ideal a scenario with the microphone it's actually behind me if you can see it, it's just here next we have another ridiculous plugin from isotope called mouth declick and what it does is it listens through your audio track and removes those tiny clicks that you get from basically your mouth moving your lips moving your tongue that kind of thing and it's pretty amazing let me show you what i mean and here we are we have the microphone just two inches from my mouth and obviously i've had to do some small tweaks to my gain settings on my preamp. And here we are, we have the microphone just two inches from my mouth, and obviously I've had to do some small tweaks to my gain settings on my preamp. Finally, we have Deplosive, which does this job better than any other plugin that I've ever tried. It's pretty much a set and forget plugin. Turn it on and let it do its work. To my gain settings on my preamp. To my gain settings on my preamp. So there we go, I really hope these tips will help you to never worry about noise in your audio again, although it happens to the best of us. Um, I suppose the takeaway from this is, if as long as you've done your very best from start to finish in recording audio, largely there's, there's lots of things you can do to correct things and sometimes even save your audio. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, informative and helpful. And as always, let's continue to help each other out. Shoot better video. See you next time, guys.